But alcohol eats away at that self-control and makes men more impulsive. And by this time, it's also hit the limbic system, where we generate our more primitive emotions. By 10 o'clock, you've got the horn, and you start losing the, the conversation of what you're talking about, and your eyes just... Usually on the barmaid, which is really quite embarrassing, because they're getting younger and younger as we get older and older. Scientists have actually shown that when you're drunk, the faces of the opposite sex appear 25% more attractive than when you're sober. That must be why I get chested at about 10.30. In the whole beer goggle stage, <laughs> I must be on the 10.30 one, which is probably the eight pints. I think women are just the same after they've had a few beers or, or drinks. I mean, they lower their standards too. <laughs> sure. Otherwise, none of us would ever have got laid. Well, I'm feeling supremely confident now, so I think it's time for a challenge. Gemma. <laughs> She's not paying any attention. But I've got a superb challenge. Check it out. After 14 shots, the room's not spinning yet, but the alcohol has virtually finished off my cerebellum. Here goes. Five meters, four inches, no problem. Keeping balance depends on a number of different things. Even though bones and joints are not affected by alcohol themselves, without help from the cerebellum, they're not coordinated with quite the same finesse. And the fact that my hand-eye coordination is now completely up the spout as well means that although I can see where the beam is quite clearly, that's not where my feet end up. How about that? Oh my god, you look like a right <laughs> idiot. Really? When a man drinks more than four pints, or a woman drinks more than three, officially it qualifies as a binge. The main reason binge drinking is thought to be dangerous is that total loss of inhibitions mixed with powerful emotions can have seriously unwelcome effects. Every year, 20,000 people behave so badly when they're drunk that they get arrested. 13,000 get into drunken fights, and around 600 people are murdered while either they or their attacker is under the influence. But alcohol is a particularly insidious drug because of the way it first draws you in and then makes your body depend on it as a vital fluid. Stop. Alcohol is more physically addictive than most illegal drugs. If you take the coke away from a regular user, they may feel bad, but they'll survive. But if you take the booze away from an alcoholic who's drinking two bottles of spirits a day, a sudden increase in brain activity could make them fit, and they may even die. The whole social you know, outlet in this country is booze. That's, that's the centre of it all. Our, mm. our drug of choice is liquid-based. Probably just not remembering things yeah. the next day, like three hours of your night and missing. I mean, it's, it must be pretty horrendous what you're doing to your body if mm. you can't remember three hours of your evening. Mm. Twenty percent of all people in their late twenties and early thirties have physical or psychological problems with alcohol. And the incidence of liver cirrhosis in this age group has tripled since the 1970s. You get to a point of, of four or five pints and you're flying and you're happy and everyone's great. You think, if you continue, your stupid alcoholic brain is telling you, if you continue to drink this you will remain at that level. But after years of field work in this, <laughs> it's quit. the answer is no, you end up being a complete At this point in the proceedings, I've lost count of how many shots of tequila I've had, and the producer's given up on the special effects because she can't get any sense out of me. Not 
I'm certainly exhibiting all of the major symptoms. Slow speech, general inertia, memory loss, slight double vision. It's completely rotten and I just feel wonderful. Does that make sense? By four in the morning, the party's over and the guys and girls are sharing one last dance. Female testosterone levels are starting to settle down now. But the alcohol won't be finished with the men's hormones for a good few hours yet. Cheers. Cheers. I wish the girls were here. <laughs> I'm mobbing. Michael is leaving the <laughs> Michael and Grant are both asleep, and um, I intend to join them, so cheers, and um, see you in the morning with our hangover. I'm feeling really, really horrible. My eyes are sore. Something has slept in here overnight and I tell you what, I couldn't operate a lawnmower, let alone a vehicle at the moment, and I feel very unpleasant. I'm going to take a breath alcohol reading and see what my breath alcohol is in the morning. The drink drive limit is 0.35. It's tiring. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.41. And that's after sleeping for about four hours, I think. Well, I'm not sure, but I think about four hours. The morning after is when the effect that alcohol has on men's hormones really shows. For men, testosterone levels drop continually throughout a big session. Oh, you're kidding me. After 12 hours, they're down by 30%. This happens because alcohol helps the body convert testosterone into estrogen. And long term, this can have profound effects on the body. It reduces the size of the testicles, the sperm count goes down, and there's another more obvious effect. All men have mammary glands behind their nipples. They're just very small. But after years of heavy drinking and reduced testosterone levels, the glands can expand and enlarge. And though they could not actually give milk, the breast tissue takes on a much more female form. I'm sobering up, but that's not the end of it. Okay, so it's nearly one o'clock. Everyone knows that driving when you're drunk is dangerous, but what about when you're hungover but completely sober? Crowds of people. Oh, oh, oh dear. I'm being tested on a simulator that's set up to assess reaction time, judgment, coordination and overall how much attention I'm paying to the world around me. I thought it was going to be easy, it's really hard. But having to pay attention to the <laughs> where the road is is challenging enough, but sticking to the speed limit is... No, what did I drive into? The object is to get round the course as fast as possible while staying within the speed limit. But as well as watching the road, I'm supposed to keep an eye on the diamonds on the side screens, and when they change, I either indicate or hit the horn. What the recent research has shown is that even when the alcohol is out of your system, your brain has not fully recovered. Oh, sorry. Well, I regard myself as quite a good driver, and I must admit, I wouldn't want to be in the cab with me this morning. Reaction time isn't bad, but judgment is very poor. So people act fast, but they do the wrong thing. God, it's full of people. Break! 
The ability to concentrate is also seriously impaired for more than three hours after all the alcohol has gone from your system. I don't like the residential areas. Too moody. Too many things going on. <coughs> How about that? The byproducts of alcohol digestion are poisons, and getting them out of your system hurts. Some days are always a very uncomfortable day in this house. My hangover cure is getting into a steaming hot bath and just drinking um, pints and pints and pints and pints of water. Alcohol is a diuretic which means that whatever you drink of an evening, you pee out more liquid than you take in, and if you overdo it, you may end up severely dehydrated. This morning when I woke up, I felt a bit nauseous, a bit of a headache, and um, I just knew I needed um, liquids. The brain is mostly made of water, so it really does shrink during a hangover and pulls on pain-sensitive filaments that connect it to the skull, and so begins the classic thumping headache. Actually, we haven't had any puking. That's the only thing we haven't done in our professional capacity. Orange juice helps not only because it's a liquid, but because it also boosts the blood sugar, which is always low the morning after the night before, brought down by the way alcohol plays with your digestion and low blood sugar makes you feel hungry. I've stopped the hair of the dog thing. That was a bit of a few years ago, I was very much a... Yeah, hair you of drink, the dog you drink at lunchtime, don't you? Not all the time. Hair of the dog seems to give relief for a while because the body stops processing the poisons in favor of digesting the new alcohol. But be warned, all the alcohol has to be broken down sooner or later. Praise the Lord. Looks good. Cheers, mate. All right. So have we learned anything from all this? It's not good, kids. Don't do it. It's not big and it's not clever. I mean, I've, I've had some evil, 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 evil hangovers that have lasted till 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> and just an absolute agony. Headaches, vomiting. It might be alcohol poisoning. Actually. It could have been. Yeah, that's, that's the next step. And then someone goes, fancy a beer? And you forget how terribly... The next thing Ripples you know is you four o'clock in a crap club in Covent Garden drinking cocktails. Exactly. <laughs>